Right, another draft physics, draft science here on YouTube, video presentation. So another commenter, um, I say being just belligerently stupid, um, defending these, you know, the concepts are just so flat earthy, um, like friction doesn't use up your momentum. Um, you know, just silly notions where you can actually believe that um, there can be any inconsistency between the concept of momentum being a measure of energy and some other concept of energy that somehow is better or more accurate than momentum. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense why they keep arguing this garbage. So let's uh, just illustrate a simple example saying you can't really believe what they believe, right? So I have a spring and I compress it exactly the same amount. Same spring, I compress it exactly the same amount. All right, <clears throat> and then I put two different carts on the spring and I have the spring relax, you know, release. Okay, so two carts and, uh, <clears throat> you know, one is half the mass of the other one. So this is one mass, this is one half mass. And they argue that somehow, even though I know the spring has a certain amount of energy and that's all it has, okay, so whatever it's going to be, we could say it's a, you know, 50 joule spring. So all it can do is produce 50 joules of push. That's all it has. It always has that when it's compressed that amount. It's like a scale. The scale reads what the, you, how much you compress the spring. That's what the scale reads. 50 pounds is always the same amount of compression on the spring. And, and weight is essentially a measurement of your energy potential. It's a, essentially a measurement of your momentum. When you're standing in gravity, you are moving in the gravity. You are actually moving down. And the scale is showing you how much you're moving down. I mean, it's right there for you to see. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the two objects clearly have the same energy. You've, you've had a fairly efficient way of pushing them with a system and um, you know the simple Newtonian view would be they have the same momentum because it's just you know half the mass times the velocity. This one will end up going twice as fast. I don't think anybody will disagree. The lighter object will go twice as fast. And so this has one V. Uh, and it's pretty clear if you use this formula your answer will be 50. You use their formula, okay, it says this thing has 100 joules and this one only has 50. So somehow the heavy object lost energy somewhere and this one gained energy somewhere. Somehow it got more energy than the <coughs> spring could actually produce. That's what their um, one half mv squared. That's the implications of it. The square is huge in terms of multiplying something's energy. So it basically says there's a huge bias for fast things. The faster I can make this go, that is, the lighter I make it, so it goes faster. This disproportional get larger and larger. You know, they can be 500 to 50. <laughs> you know, I can go as high as you want to. You know. Theoretically, if I could beat the speed of light, I could create insane disproportions in the um, amount of extra energy I create just by lightening things. So it's on its face, insensible nonsense. It's just, it's just garbage. Um, momentum and uh, the kinetic energy formula both can't be right. Um, they can't both be. Uh, a, a somehow accurate descriptions of reality. They're in complete conflict. It doesn't make any sense. All right, so um, well, I'll go back to the comment and then I'll, I'll do the next example just because it's another illustration of just how people misunderstand. That there's subtleties to all of this thing and you can't just use these blanket statements and say, there, I've said it all. It doesn't say it all. All right, so he says, um, do you agree that every, that every force on an object has an equal and opposite reaction force? So I saw the word reaction force. I'm like, no, I don't agree. There's another force. There's one force. 
um, the force is in the terms of, a, as I've always stated, an imbalance. You create an imbalance. Energy is just an imbalance. More pressure on one side than the other side. Then you have something that can be energetic. If you equalize the forces, then it doesn't look like energy. Now, there's plenty of energy there, but you can't see it. It doesn't, it can't, it can't be kinetic. On what is pushing the object? So I stated, well, you know, I would be agreeable if it said for every action, there's a reaction. That is, every time something causes something to move, it bangs into it, it's got to stop moving. So both of them are going to change. One thing that wasn't moving is going to move, and the thing that was moving is going to stop moving. But there's only one force involved. So anyway, he says to this, uh, if I push a box, will the box push me back? Depends on how hard the surface is. <laughs> so again, if, yes, if there's elastic things and inelastic things, if you push into something inelastic, it will bend, and then you'll get you know, forces that try to push you back, just like we push into the earth and the earth pushes back. Um, but if it's inelastic, nothing's going to push you back. It's just the weight you're pushing. You're going to push on atoms. You're going to successfully move some atoms, but you're not going to be able to move a brick wall or a building. You can't push on a building and say, well, the building pushed back. No, you just didn't successfully move any of the atoms because they're all connected to each other. Okay, and so to move one of them, you have to move all of them. And you didn't successfully do that, so you didn't accomplish anything. So yes, all of your energy was reflected. It wasn't capable of being absorbed. So you really didn't change that thing. You didn't cause an action. If I push on a building and the building doesn't move, I can't say, I caused an action, can I? And there was a reaction, because there really wasn't. I didn't cause any action. Um, <clears throat> all right, so he says this part, and this is the part that, where he just doesn't understand. Uh, this is literally the principle behind the operation of rockets in space. No, it isn't. The principle behind rockets in space is merely the fact that you can think of it as heat, and you're releasing heat in a direction. And when you do that, um, that means you didn't contain it anymore. That means you, you created some imbalance in your system, and now the energy you have is hitting more on one side of you than another side of you. So, in space, I would argue... It does, it's very double-click sensitive. So, if I do have a rocket, um, I guess we'll put a point on it just for fun, and we'll put a thing on the back. But let's say he's talking more like, okay, say if I want to have the little rockets on the side to make it do little things. Okay, little movements. The idea is that I have a bunch of gas inside the rocket. So I guess I should have drawn this much bigger, so I might as well. Um, <clears throat> and the truth is, is I have a I have a pressurized tank. You know, a tank inside the the rocket that's full of pressurized gas molecules. All right, they're pressurized, so that means they're banging into each other a lot, and they're banging into the sides of the vessel evenly. There's just as many bouncing off one side as there is the other side. So, in all directions. So, it can't go anywhere. There's no way to make it go somewhere. <laughs> because it's got as many little pieces hitting this side as little pieces hit this side. And so, it's in balance. And if I want to move this whole ship somewhere, then the idea is all I have to do is uh, break that balance. So... Um, yeah, I could just make a cone here. All right. <laughs> um, so if I make an opening, so now when stuff is hitting equally in all directions, all of a sudden I create a direction that's different. Now it's not hitting this side. Okay, I open the valve, and now the gas can go out this way. The pressure can leave. Well, what have I done? Well, I've created a circumstance now where much more energy is going to be hitting this surface. This surface gets hit million times or whatever, okay, this surface doesn't get hit a million times because I just let it fly out. So there's nothing hitting my surfaces here. My surfaces aren't getting hit a million times. So there's a bunch of stuff hitting me this way, not a bunch of stuff hitting me this way. 
So I go that way because now I have an imbalance inside of me. There's no new force. I let force out. I let energy and direction out. Okay. I let stuff that was going to hit my surface here, I let it fall through the surface. I made a hole in the surface and let it fall through the surface. So now it doesn't hit me in that direction. So I have lots of little BBs hitting me this way, not so many hitting me this way. So obviously I'm going to go that way because more energy is hitting me that way than it's hitting me that way. And that's really all that's taking place. Now obviously if I, if I can ignite this stuff and cause the molecules to expand in this cone, well then I'll get even more energy out of it, right? So if I just shoot the gas out, okay. That's basically what they do with the little rockets. The little rockets are just shooting the gas out. So it's just making a hole somewhere in the tank in a direction and saying, okay, this is the this direction is still this direction. So I'm still just creating, no matter which way I let it out, the tank, it still goes right into the whole tank. So it's just seen as a hole in whatever place I want to go. So if I move it this way, whatever way I move it, it's just like making the hole in a different place on the tank. And so I'm just changing where I'm letting energy out. And in this case, like I said, if this, <laughs> if I ignite this, okay, and I cause these molecules to expand, you know, and create, you know, hydrogen and water, you know, hydrogen, I mean, and um, oxygen, and I create water molecules, they're expanding, and they expand in this cone. And when they push in the cone this way, it's converted essentially into energy this way. It's the only way that, it's the only direction the pressure can go. That's why they have to make these cones out of the hardest substances on earth is because there's tremendous pressure to just tear them apart and the whole they're taking the pressure in this direction and converting it into pressure in this direction into movement in this direction and in the in the process of doing that the real motion is in this direction uh yeah i don't know if i have to say much more about that i mean but that's the simple argument is you're just releasing you're, you're allowing energy to escape. Just again, ping pong paddles. I have a ping pong ball bouncing back and forth. I make a hole in the paddle. You can get the idea that this paddle doesn't get hit, you know, as many times as it used to, okay, compared to this paddle. It's not hard to figure out. <sighs> All right. So, I mean, I'm just saying that, so there's a subtlety there that you're just not paying any attention to. I can certainly, it's always an exchange of energy. So I guess that's another key point to just emphasize. You think of it as some sort of more complex uh, interaction. And I'm saying, no, the interaction is pretty simple. You have atoms that are moving. And if you allow, if you have contact with more atoms and you make those atoms move, you're going to move less. So it's just like heat transfer. You wouldn't say there's an equal and opposite heat when you transfer heat there's not some opposite force or some opposite heat or some opposite no you lost heat and something else gained heat it's a very much a one-way exchange all right <clears throat> let's see i wouldn't be surprised to hear that you think photons can interfere with photons oh that would be interesting see what he says he says this is literally the principle okay now he didn't he didn't take out the he took out what i what i'm responding to he actually said something uh, you well i guess i could read his previous comments i don't remember exactly no point misquoting it but it was just garbage then he says irrelevant no you're the one that's off topic so this is just so funny he insults me with some gratuitous stupid statement about what he would expect me to believe um and then he, I respond to it, and he responds with off-topic. You started that topic, asshole. I mean, just amazing. No connection to this discussion. Yeah, exactly. Your comment had no connection to the discussion at all. It was just an insult. Um, you can't even stay. So I'll, you know, just a, I'll go back and I'll read his statement, right? I mean, um, you know, it just... I wouldn't be surprised if you denied that, that at this point. So, you know, and I said... Um, you know, I just said, I wouldn't be surprised to hear that you both think photons can interfere with photons. Um, you know, it's just, so obviously, you know, he wants to pigeonhole me and say, I have to believe in something called a reaction force. There's no extra force. If I transfer my energy to something, uh, there's no reaction force involved. 
I lose energy, that thing gained energy. If a, a, a cue ball hits a ball in pool and the cue ball stops and the other ball moves, there's no reaction force. Okay, there's just an exchange. The cue ball had velocity and gave it to the other ball, and that's all that took place. There's no reaction force. All right. Um, <clears throat> this is absolute nonsense friction without any loss of momentum. This is absolute nonsense friction without any loss of momentum. Unproven and unprovable. So the simple statement is you can never preserve momentum and then say there were losses somewhere. I lost energy somewhere. I have the, I have the, exactly the same momentum in the two objects, right? Object A completely transferred its momentum to object B. I can't then say, but there's a whole bunch of losses. There, there can't be any losses to friction. There can't be any noise. There can't be any sound. There can't be any heat. There can't be any anything if I successfully transfer it. Now, if I lost 0.05%, well, then I can make a little bit of noise. You know, if I lost, uh, you know, 0.1%, you know, I maybe made a little heat, <laughs> you know, but I can't lose half the energy. Anyway, um, total momentum will be conserved. So he, he says it again. So um, I guess I should have left that thing on the, the board. Same spring produces two different motions in objects. The lighter objects move twice as fast. The slower, the heavier objects moves half the speed. Same energy in both these objects. Same momentum. How can energy possibly say, how can you say it was conserved? Because your argument is, is one of them has twice as much kinetic energy. Somehow the heavy object didn't absorb the energy and it somehow has half the energy. It has exactly the same momentum, but somehow it has half the energy. I mean, it's, it's, it's an insane paradox. You can't have it both ways. It's impossible. You either choose, you have to choose, that you have to say overtly to yourself, momentum is a lie, it's nonsense, or you have to say the other equation is a nonsense. But you can't keep both of them. Momentum can't mean anything at all if your kinetic energy formula is correct. Because momentum is never telling you the truth. You have to choose one. You can't have this moronic duality with things that get different answers. They give you different answers for what the thing has. You can't be you can't have ten dollars in your pocket and five dollars in your pocket. You can't do that. Alright. Um, conservation of momentum is a core concept behind Newtonian mechanics. There's just absolutely no point in saying that while you defend one half MV squared. It doesn't make any sense. Because clearly that equation doesn't give you the same answer. The two equations give you fundamentally different answers for what the thing's energy is. How can you say, I mean, how can you, how can you do this crap? It's just so stupid. I mean, I really don't have to draw it again, do I? I mean, your momentum formula says the one object has twice as much energy. The momentum formula says they have exactly the same energy. How can both formulas be right? It's not possible. All right. All right, they don't even have the same units. Of course they have the same units. Kilograms, meters per second, uh, uh, meters and seconds. Same, same things. So I, they keep making this argument that you can't make a joule out of momentum. It has the same things in it. The one half mv squared, it has the same units in it. Mass and velocity, exactly the same units kilograms, meters, and seconds. They contain the same components. And no, scaling joules by 100, I said scale them by 10, but whatever, won't fix it. Says you. You don't show how it doesn't fix it. You haven't, again, you'll never show me an experiment where you get twice as much energy out of your kinetic formula. You'll never show me where the train going 10 miles an hour, well, let's say, okay, the one ton train going um, one mile an hour, uh, I should use two and one, you know, just invert them. So the two ton train going one mile an hour, where you collected twice as much energy off the one ton train going two miles an hour. Show me where you actually collected that twice as much energy. Show me anything that you, like where you put a generator on the wheel, where you banged them into a spring, 
where you had them rise, you know, with a pulley and you had them bang into the thing and then they lifted up a horse, you know. <laughs> Show me any example where the lighter thing moving faster actually produces twice as much work. Show me it. Well, you can't show me it because it's stupid. All right. Let's see. Because there's a nonlinear difference between momentum and energy. It doesn't make any sense. That's just such gibberish. A nonlinear difference. What's the difference? You squared one of them. That's the only difference. I mean, the one half, you can't believe the one half makes any difference to anything. So, so let's just take the one half off and you have mv squared. You're saying mv squared is fundamentally different than mv in terms of units. I'm saying that's just nonsense. All right. Um, if you don't believe in... Okay, so this is not an argument, only empty rhetoric. So again, you said this... So I'm responding to the fact that he's saying... Oh, let's go back to his comment, right? Uh, this is not difficult concept to grasp. And then I said, if you don't believe in energy conservation and and believe in magical sources of energy. So it's easy to understand what they're doing if you believe in magic. But if you believe the universe doesn't have magic in it and you can't possibly have 100 joules of energy and 250 joules of energy at the same time, um, yeah, then this is absolute nonsense. <laughs> so he says... You know, this is not an argument, only empty rhetoric. No, it's a clear argument. You believe in a magical universe where somehow things have magical energy and that they can overcome losses to friction without slowing down, without losing any energy. You believe in impossible things. So he says, if you can't go without resorting to this kind of baby talk. So again, you're the one who's talking baby talk. You don't understand the mechanics at all. You don't understand what gravity is. You don't know what forces are. You don't know how energy is exchanged. You don't even know what the concept of energy is. That's actually something things possess. You have no right to say you have any integrity. So again, it's just... You're the one who has produced zero evidence for your extraordinary claim that something has twice as much energy as something else. Something Two things pushed with exactly the same amount of force and you're saying when I'm absorbed much more energy by some magic. You didn't explain how the other object didn't absorb the energy, but the momentum theory says they both do have the same energy. Um, no problem. Transfer successful. Um, and I think every experiment you do to see how much energy they have, that is how many, how many marbles they can move, you know, crash them into marbles, see how many marbles they move, see how many anything they move. See how much heat you can generate, see how much anything you can generate from their velocity and their mass, and you'll see that they produce exactly the same amount of molecular movement. They are both capable of producing the same amount of movement of molecules in the universe. They have in them the same amount of energy, and they can release it, the same amount of energy. And that's it, you know, unless you're going to nuclearize them or something. You know, we're not talking about how many, how much fissionable energy they have. We're we're just talking about how much kinetic movement energy they have, and there's just no counter argument. So he did make some. He edited one of these comments and said some crap about how I didn't respond. Of course, I did respond. Um, so maybe you know, we just might as well go through some of this crap, I suppose. All right, so, <clears throat> no, that first statement actually is true, you complete idiot. So he, he actually is defending the idea of um, that momentum, you can conserve momentum and still have friction. I mean, it's just too stupid. Okay, uh, transfer momentum. You can, you, can <laughs> you can maintain momentum. You can have, you can conserve momentum and have friction. Just can't do that. Uh, it's you who doesn't even comprehend the most basic physics. So you talk about useless sentences. Useless sentence. Um, the momentum is transferred to the surface. So here we go. So again, his argument is, is so if, I, if we go all the way back to the physics girl example, to be precise, and we take a heavy train. Um, no, we take a, a train, one ton train, and there's another one ton train. And the first one-ton train is moving two miles an hour. And it 
connects to another train. And now they both move one mile an hour. So now you have twice as much mass moving half the speed. Now that's a complete transfer of the momentum, right? So I mean, let's draw it. I mean, just to, just to be clear how silly they are. All right. So you have a, a train with one unit of mass, okay, moving two units of velocity. And then you hit it into another one unit of mass. And you have a very successful transfer. The, there's a locking mechanism. So when the one train hits the other one, it locks onto it. So they both have to go together. And so what you end up with now is these two trains will, as a collective mass, a two, now it has a two mass, all right? And now it's going to go one velocity. So we'll lose half the velocity as it doubles the mass. And that's the simple scenario. Logic tells you you can't have gained any momentum. That before the trains hit, there was a certain amount of momentum in the system. This one had zero momentum because it had zero velocity. This one had all the units, say 100 units of momentum. It had all of them. When they're combined, now it's spread over both objects. It's still the same exact amount of momentum. By their formula, this object had 250 momentum units, okay, or whatever you want to call them. Um, well, let me make it so it's an easy, even, um, this one had 500 before it hit the other train, and after hitting the other train and now moving with twice the mass and half the speed, it, their formula that he says is true and accurate and useful and meaningful says it only has 250 joules of energy. So that's the scenario. I mean, it's just so obvious how that's impossible. Okay, it's, it's nonsense. It's garbage. It's silly. It's stupid. And again, if I just made the two trains separately, if I just make the separate trains of the, you know, the, the train going, the, the, the one mass train going to velocity and the two mass train, okay, going one velocity, these two things equal each other with the MV formula. Same exact amount of energy. Their formula, their kinetic energy formula, says this object has 2x the momentum. Twice as much momentum here than there is here. Twice as much. Momentum says, no, it's exactly the same. But their formula says twice as much. And they say there's not a problem here. That, this, that makes sense to them. They can somehow make that make sense. And the argument is that somehow there was so much friction and so much loss in this collision, that's why there's only 250 left. Well, how can they have the same momentum? How can it be that they, you conserve the momentum completely? That is, you have two m's uh, moving one half the velocity, so you conserved all of the momentum, and you lost half the energy. They say that you can have friction and all kinds of things are happening. Well, how could I conserve the momentum then? How could it still be going the speed it's supposed to go with a perfect transfer? If I have a perfect transfer, okay, this is exactly what I should expect. I should expect 2m and 1v, okay? That's exactly what I should expect. If I have a perfect transfer of 100% of the energy, if 100% of the energy is transferred, this is what I would expect. How can I have possibly lost energy? How could I make heat? How could I lift a horse? How could I do any kind of work and still have the same momentum? I mean, it's too stupid. There's nothing, you know, like I said, it's just humans are way too underqualified to have opinions on subjects. They're just too stupid. This is paradoxical, contradictory, absolutely nonsensical it can't happen this way it can't happen the way they're describing it can't impossible physically impossible to happen this is worse than ufo theory all right when you are slowed down by a surface in one direction so if i was slowed down it means i can't conserve the momentum it means the heavier train i mean the combined trains have to go slower 
They can't lose mass, okay? So they have to go slower. So they're not going 1V anymore. They're going something less than 1V if there was some friction or some noise or some heat. They have to go less than 1V. And that means your total energy is going to be less too. But, I mean, it's you're still going to say somehow the little thing had twice as much energy. There is an equal and opposite force on the surface. So this is more. This, that's just babble. Uh, thereby conserving total momentum of the total system. So the whole point of having wheels and grease and all that stuff is is to eliminate an awful lot of any kind of losses to mechanical things. So we could just say the trains are on a maglev track or they're you know on water. Okay, they're boats. Um, we can do lots of things to get rid of friction as a, a realistic um, a source uh, energy drain. So this is just, you're the one just playing games now, pretending that the scenario isn't completely understandable, that you can have a very efficient transfer of the energy, and this is what momentum says your outcome should be if 100% of your momentum is transferred. And if anything less than 100% of your, your momentum is transferred, this velocity has to go lower. Just a fact. <laughs> okay. You can't link me to a single. No, you can't link me to a single. Again, your physics has had hundreds of years, millions of practitioners. Um, you know, why can't you show me one experiment demonstrating that this stupid idiotic formula is correct, where you actually extracted this extra energy, this extra 250 joules. Show me you extracting it from a single experiment. The, the energy above momentum Show me one single experiment done on Earth where you ever extracted that energy, that extra kinetic energy. Um, can you link me to a single experiment actually demonstrating complete transfer of momentum? Well, I, I suppose I can in the sense of as long as we understand complete can be 99%. So I can link you to a, lots of Professor Lewin videos with um, you know, little carts on an air track. And he can push the cart and it'll go back and forth for 10 minutes. I mean, incredibly um, efficient in terms of very low losses. Very, very low losses. Um, and a real loss. I can't believe he's, if he's going to... Oh, I'm the one who said that. <laughs> okay, yeah, kinetic energy. Okay, so I said that. So I was reading my comment, sorry. So he can't link me to a single experiment actually demonstrating complete transfer of momentum and a real loss of kinetic energy. So that's the challenge. You're saying that the kinetic energy formula is correct. Well, show me a single experiment demonstrating it. And the only one you're going to be able to find are silly ones like dropping steel balls into clay. Um, you know, some someone that I can explain to you why that's not a very good way of measuring energy. It's not a very good scale. Okay, it doesn't give you the right answers. It's a bad spring. All right. Uh, you, let's see, you... Your reply has nothing to do with the point I was clarifying. There was no point to be clarified. You're making an argument that's ludicrous. There can be friction, but you conserve your momentum. No, you, there can't be. I'm not conserving my momentum if there's friction. Um, but in case you want another correction, that one-ton train will bounce backward, so not 100% of the momentum will ever be transferred. So, again, we're talking about ideal circumstances, and again, you can't really do thought experiments. And we could have physical circumstances that are close enough to 100 to not worry about it. So it's just nonsense to say we can't create very efficient transfers. All right, the premise is a false premise. No, it's not a false premise to say there are experiments you can do very well, very well machined parts, and you can eliminate as much friction, you know, lots of the friction. Uh, it's only an inelastic collisions. So again, this more of this rubbish about elastic and inelastic. It really just has to do with there's a certain amount of energy. And you either transfer it completely or you, you transfer part of it. And if you transfer part of it, it means you still contain part of it. And that's all. So it's still the same momentum. And by your formula, you still have objects in the, in the formula that have way too much energy. They gain energy. I hit heavy things into light things. I'm making energy by your own formula. Uh, do you have a 
you do have a loss of kinetic energy to other forms of energy. So it's more saying there's losses when there is no losses. You won't be able to show the losses. You won't demonstrate the losses. You can never conserve the momentum. That is, you can never transfer the momentum, 100% of the momentum, or 99% of the momentum, and then argue there's a whole bunch of losses to the environment. It's silly nonsense. And that's precisely when the two trains end up sticking to another, one another. Uh, that process of sticking is what converts the kinetic energy. So again, he's saying there's some conversion. No, there's a transfer. <laughs> but anyway, but regardless, in your scenario, we don't have that. And so no kinetic energy is lost. So he says that there's no kinetic energy lost. Clearly, there's kinetic energy lost. <clears throat> so that's just absolute nonsense. I mean, I did it over. I mean, I went through it. I mean, you can't deny there's a loss of kinetic energy. Okay, uh, the, your formula says something that weighs two masses and has one velocity makes 250 joules, and then something that has one, I mean, uh, 500 joules, and something that has two masses and one velocity, I mean, two velocities and one mass makes 500 joules. That's what your formula says. All right. <clears throat> so. So he asked, let's see, this is his comment. Do you agree that every force on an object has an equal and opposite reaction force? So again, I've pointed out how there's no reaction force. Okay, like when we get pushed by gravity into the earth, you could argue the earth doesn't move. So we dent the earth essentially, and the earth pushes back. So we don't successfully hit the earth and move the earth in space. We don't accomplish the task. So the earth pushes us back. It reflects us. It reflects our, our imposition. So we didn't transfer the energy. The earth threw the energy back at us. All right. <clears throat> On which is pushing the object. So again, you're not successfully pushing if you're not accomplishing any transfer of your push. So if you're not successfully pushing, yes, whatever you put in, you're going to get back out again. But if you successfully push and you successfully move the object, there's no opposite reaction to your success. So if, you're, if I make the object light enough and you completely are succeeding in pushing it, you can't argue there's an opposite reaction, right? Because you're hugely successful and you don't even feel a thing. <laughs> so the more successful you are, the less you'll feel it. The more unsuccessful you are, the more you'll feel the kickback. Okay. <clears throat> Wouldn't be surprised if you denied that at this point. Yes, I do deny it. Um, just as I deny, you can make these absolute statements and say, eh, just like energy can never be destroyed. Well, if you understand what energy is and imbalance, the fact is, is you can create a circumstance where the imbalance is never realized, that it, the imbalance exists, but it never hits any other matter. So in a sense, the imbalance never is realized, and by never being realized, it can't really exist. And so therefore, the other side of the imbalance doesn't have its equal partner. Okay, so in a sense, you can lose real energy in the universe, because there's no consequence that moves the matter. Again, gravity is sort of telling you this. Somebody's, you know, all of your theories of gravity are bullshit because none of them account for the fact that it's real energy. And the fact is you have to explain why more energy goes into the earth than comes out of the earth. That's that the symptom of more energy going in than coming out would be something you would call gravity. More energy is hitting your head than is pushing up from your feet. That would exactly describe what gravity is. And in a sense, the only way you can create that is to somehow kill energy, take it away, lose a little bit. And the loss is in the fact that you're slowing a force down. The force that's going in is going in at the speed of light. And it doesn't get through the earth at the speed of light because it's got to push matter. And by occupying itself, pushing matter, moving little pieces of matter, it has lost some momentum for the period of time it's pushing the matter. Now, as soon as it's done pushing, it goes back to its normal state. But for the period of time it was pushing the matter, it moved less than the speed of light. And by moving less than the speed of light, 
its total distance in time is less than the speed of light and that means it has less momentum. So absolute statements probably aren't a great idea and they aren't necessary. You could just say it's a tendency uh, in most cases. We could use words like that. We don't have to have these absolute declarations that don't work. Okay. Um, uh, but if you do agree, then the total momentum will be conserved even in the case of friction. So he said it again. Even in the case of friction, the total momentum, when he says conserved, the whole point of saying conserved is the momentum is transferred successfully. No one says momentum was successfully conserved when you didn't move the other object. You didn't give it any momentum. No one would say, oh, I successfully conserved the momentum. Obviously, if you're losing it to heat or sound or noise, then you're not going to say it was conserved. You're going to say it was lost to heat or noise or friction. So it just proves how stupid he is. Nobody, no physicist would say that's a proper way to state it. It's just absolute nonsense. Friction means you're not going to be able to transfer your momentum. It means you're going to lose momentum. The objects that are involved in your transfer will not successfully keep the momentum. They will lose it to the environment. Losing it to an, the environment is not conservation. Okay. Uh, friction, which c causes total kinetic energy to be lost. So again, it's just nonsense. There is no extra energy you lose or gain. You can't gain kinetic energy merely by hitting fast things into slow things. It's just too, I mean, slow things into fast things. It's just too silly. Uh, momentum are putting a spring and shooting light things. So I have the same gunpowder in the bullets. His argument is, is the lighter I make the bullet, the more energy the bullet has. That's his argument. And it's really, really, really stupid. So if I make lighter and lighter bullets, I somehow make bullets that can do more damage. That can affect more molecules. Absolute bullshit. Okay, momentum and energy are just not the same thing. Energy is one word. And you either think the MV formula takes care of everything, or you think there's some use for this one-half MV squared that creates preposterous, lunatic, crazy um, contradictions. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Momentum and energy are just not the same thing. It just doesn't make any sense. Then what is momentum? What use is it? If it's not a description of energy, what use is it then? What value does it have? Okay, it's not a difficult concept to grasp. And that's the part where I said, well, if you believe in fairies, it's not difficult. But otherwise, it's really difficult to grasp some concept where you say there's two formulas describing energy. They get completely different answers. And somehow that's okay. Uh, no, it's not okay. So these are all my responses, blah, 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 blah. So, I don't know if there's any more that needs to be done. Um, yeah, this is, yes, uh, a month long. So, so I said, um, you didn't clarify anything. This conversation has a month long context. And he says, yes, a month long context where you demolished what credibility you have. So again, but you haven't explained how any of that happened. I haven't gotten a single reasonable response. I haven't got a single, nobody's posted me to the link where you collect the kinetic energy. You're saying these things have extra kinetic energy. You're saying smart scientists make small motors because little, little motors going faster is more energy than big motors going slower. You're the one arguing that all these little things going faster have so much more energy than the big things going slower. Show me, is my simple argument. Show me one example. And I'll go back to it again. You can't show me any. The only examples that were used to create this bullshit science was dropping balls into clay. Again, so you think clay is the best, something that deforms so easily. You think that's the best way to detect how much energy something has is how it affects clay. And you don't understand the concept that maybe a substance like clay would have a huge bias to fast things. 
the faster they move through the clay, the less they stick to it, the less um, friction they have with it, the less uh, they, they um, deform it, the less they do all kinds of things, the faster you go through the clay. And you don't understand that concept. You don't understand that clay might be a shitty way to measure energy. You don't believe that's true. Okay. Then you're really dumb. All right. <clears throat> uh, the kinetic energy for, uh, formula can't be experimentally demonstrated to be accurate. That's what I said. Except for every instance of conservation of energy ever known to every mechanical engineer around the world. So again, he, he won't show me. Show me the experiment where the thing, go, the thing that weighs half as much going twice as fast um, produces more work than the thing going, you know, that weighs twice as much and going half as fast. Show, show me that example. Show me the example where the slow, heavy thing does less work than the fast, light thing. Show the example. But he won't do that. So he's insulting every mechanical engineer because apparently he's saying all mechanical engineers don't understand that something going twice as fast that weighs half as much has exactly the same amount of energy. He's telling me mechanical engineers don't know that. They're too stupid. Oh, okay. Two-ton train traveling one mile an hour has exactly the same energy potential as one-ton train traveling two miles an hour. Can't be any clearer. What's his counter-argument? What do you think it's going to be? <laughs> yeah, let's see. That'll be the exciting part. You don't explain why. You just present this as a dogma. No, I'm asking you to somehow refute it. Point out a single experiment demonstrating where it isn't true. Where the twice as heavy thing going one half the speed uh, has one half the energy. Show it. Okay. Why don't you explain why you just present this as a dogma? So again, I didn't present anything as a dogma. I'm presenting it as until you demonstrate to me some reason I can't believe this. That's what momentum says. And momentum works. Okay. Um, uh, that is an absolute fact. And you have no evidence to contradict it. There we go. Uh, yet you cite not a shred of evidence for this piece of dogma. So again, um, you are the ones that have the very old history, the lots of scientific experiments, lots of scientists. You should have this experiment down already. You should have already done it somewhere. I'm offering to do it, okay? So, but I want to bet real money. So you put up the money. I'll put up a thousand dollars. You put up a thousand dollars, and let's do the experiment, okay? So put your money where your mouth is, and I'll do the experiment. I'll have it commissioned. Uh, we'll both agree on the person doing the experiment, you know, that he has the credentials to do it correctly. And, and we can just see if we can, uh, you know, somehow detect this extra energy you say these objects have. So we'll just run a little cart that has, you know, half the mass and, and twice the velocity and a little cart that has, you know, twice the, the velocity and half the mass and twice the velocity or you know, the inverse. And we'll bang them into a spring and we'll see if one of them, if one of them bends the spring more. Or we'll bang them into some kind of bending thing, you know, some kind of other way. We'll do it numerous ways to detect the energy. And we'll see if we can ever get this twice as much energy that you say the fast object has. All right. I mean, this is just, you know, I can't, what else am I supposed to do? Until, you know, like I said, the experiment must have been done somewhere. So somewhere on the Internet, there has to be somebody who, um, you know, did this inverse cart thing. You know, t twice as heavy, twice as fast thing. You know, somebody had to have done it somewhere. Uh, the thought experiment was merely being used to simplify the transfer of energy. And yet you can't even get a collision outcome correct. So again, the, it's a thought experiment. You don't understand that those are done in a, you know, with, with certain um, established premises. And you're just not saying, okay, you won't accept the premises, fine. You present false info about what happens that actually matters in this context. So there's nothing I've stated that's false. You have demonstrated nothing. Not a single shred of counter evidence. So you haven't proven one time, you haven't shown me one single experiment ever done in the history of mankind where you collected this extra, twice as much energy from fast things. You have no evidence. You don't know shit. I'm saying the same thing to you, obviously. 
and the internet would be better off without unscrupulous morons like you. Exactly what I, my sentiments towards you. The world would be better off if you weren't all a bunch of lying, creepy, religious kooks. You have no evidence for what you believe. You're just all a bunch of UFO conspiracy kookers. Okay, and, and uh, you, you have no credibility. You keep telling me what the truth is. Uh, superposition and entanglement. And, oh, it's all mysterious and weird. No, it isn't at all. Okay, and Newton knew that, and you morons can't figure it out. And Newton was a religious kook. And he did so much better than you. All right. <clears throat> um, let's see. If you bang two trains into a spring, they will compress it the same amount. So I've changed the experiment for the deliberate purpose of just let's isolate it even more. So I could have easily said you can bang t a train into a spring and lock the spring at the highest compression and then use the spring to give momentum to the other train. So you can do the transfer in lots of ways. So I'm saying, okay, if you don't, if you're going to give me some technical argument that, okay, yeah, when light things hit heavy things, the light things end up bouncing off to some extent. Yes, that's the fact, blah, 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 blah. So let's do it a different way. Let's take the light train and bang it into a spring and then compress the spring. And then let's put the heavy train on the compressed spring and then release the spring. Now I've completely transferred the energy. Okay, I stored it and then I released it to the other train. So I've completely transferred the energy from one train that compressed the spring and the other train is going to be released by the spring. So now I've given you a nice clean example, a nice clean transfer. Okay, it's still the same exact thought experiment. I've just cleaned up a detail that you were being a, a, a you know, pandemic, but pen, <laughs> whatever that word is, you're just, you know, being anal over. Um, so I got rid of the anal, your anal problem. And what does he say to that? Um, then that's not a collision experiment that you started out with. Yeah, I, I'm just giving you another example of the same exact transfer. You're saying the transfer can't happen. I'm saying, well, I can make it so it does happen. So let's just take an extra step, let the one train hit a spring, then we'll put the other train on that compressed spring and shoot it. So we've done exactly the same transfer. The momentum will be exactly the same. All my numbers will be exactly the same. Your numbers will be exactly the same. And then you can explain to me where we lost half the energy. Uh, then that's not a collision experiment that you no, and where we gained twice as much kinetic energy, right? Because if I use the heavy train to compress the spring, he's going to argue that when I release it on the light train, I'm going to get twice as much energy back. See, that's where they make magical energy. So this is the fact. So, so this is probably the way we should do the experiment, um, just to really show how full of shit they are. So <clears throat> the experiment should be, I mean, this is really, this argument is so, I mean, it's so decisive that uh, there really shouldn't be any possibility of anybody arguing. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a heavy train, okay, so what, this is a two mass and one velocity, and we're going to bang it into a spring. And right at the point where it compresses the spring the most, that is right when this thing stops moving, so the last bit where it stops moving into the into the spring, we put a little lock on the spring. So we lock the spring right there, lock. So we lock the spring. All right, so now we have the locked spring. And now we'll put a one mass, okay, two velocity car. You know, it will have two velocity, but it's just a one mass. So we had a two masser going in at one velocity, and now we're gonna put the the one mass cart in front of that same spring that was compressed by the heavy one. And now it's gonna leave, and guess what? It will leave at, at two velocity, okay? That's how fast it will leave and it will go, all right? His argument is, is this thing only had uh, 250 joules, let's say. This one only had 250 joules of energy when it compressed the spring, and somehow, by merely putting a lighter object on here, we now have 500 joules of energy. That's what he thinks is good physics. He thinks that's so empirical, so proven, so overwhelming that I'm a complete asshole, I'm an evil moron, a fucktard, a flat earther, a UFO believer, a religion believer, a God believer. I'm so fucking silly because I think that's absolutely ludicrous. I think that's the shittiest physics 
imaginable. You couldn't draw dumber, stupider, more idiotic physics than to believe that somehow you made more energy merely by putting a smaller object on the spring. That somehow I gave this spring 500 joules of energy by merely putting a light object in front of it. If I had put a heavier object in front of it, I would have lost twice the energy. So if I would have gone to a 3M, I would have lost, right? He thinks that makes sense. That happens in the real world. That all we need to do had to have free energy to make everybody have all the energy they could ever want. Free, 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 free. All I need to do is like get a big flywheel going and then bang it into a smaller fly flywheel, connect it with a gear to a smaller flywheel that goes faster. And by making something go faster, I can make more energy. I mean, it's too stupid. So let's do the experiment, okay? So let's, come on, all you people who defend conventional physics, who think this is a good formula. I mean, I had one person claim they are willing to put up any money at all. I'll go up to 4,000, let's say. So just bring it on. Bring on your challenge to me saying, I can prove you wrong. We know what the right answer is. The right answer is you can make free energy just by putting small objects in front of springs you compressed with heavy objects. You could do that all day and just keep making free energy. We don't have to burn oil anymore. We don't have to get solar anymore. We don't have to get wind. We don't have, we have to do any of that shit. All we got to keep doing is putting lighter objects in front of springs we compressed with heavy objects. Just do that all day long and you'll have all the free energy you could possibly want. I mean, it's insipid physics and it just shows how little attention physics has paid. It's paid no attention to its foundations. No attention whatsoever. It's just bought on to silly concepts and it hasn't put Paul Flight any scrutiny at all. It's just amazing that I have to bring this to your attention. That some other physicist, some real physicist, hasn't pointed it out that, man, that's a really silly equation. And people actually have recited the history and they think the history gives, gives it credibility. The whole way it was created is so ugly. It started off as just MV squared. I mean, imagine how off it was. It was so insanely off. I mean, we had Newton's MV and they did MV squared. I mean, squaring the velocity. I mean, preposterously huge numbers created. It was that far off. Ugh, so you people are just pathetic. So yeah, that's now it's enough of a video. Okay. Oh, we call something childish bullying. Amazing. <laughs> he does these raggy statements and he calls, he calls somebody else a bully. Uh, amazing. Uh, what is this? You don't understand the counter argument. You don't have one. Okay, I was talking about the ideal and efficient case. That's what I was doing. So that sounds like me. Uh, in that scenario, the momentum will be distributed across the two objects. Oh, so 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 he. It's okay for him to point out how you know I have to be very exact in what I say, and I can't you know I can't. When I mean 99% transfer, you know, yeah, I can't say complete, you know. And yet when I do it to him, so when I point out if you bang two trains into a spring, well, you know, if I, I pointed out the other um, nuance that you can't reflect something off of something heavier than it. It'll move the heavy thing a little bit and it'll reflect, but there won't be a perfect reflection. My shoe. Um... So the basic spring disproves your point. The work energy theorem disproves your point. So oh, let's see that part. Um, childish bullying. No experimental evidence of near complete momentum transfer and half the energy loss. Okay, so I'm pointing out how there's no experiment. He says the basic spring disproves your point. So it absolutely doesn't. There's Again, if it does, why don't you just show me the video. Show me the video where the heavier object going half the speed um, produces less compression. The work energy theorem disproves your point. Well, sorry, it doesn't. <laughs> so it's just more nonsense. Some, a piece of mathematics proves you wrong. No, it doesn't. Um, gravity 
batteries disprove your point. No, there's no disproof. So again, it's just absolute nonsense. You're the one with the girly physics, the silly physics. Let's drop things into clay and we'll use that to define how much it weighs. Yeah, that's your physics. It's nonsense. Okay. Um, televangelist. Okay, you repeat yourself like a religious televangelist. Well, you keep repeating yourself. Yeah, I repeated the point. So I did that quite on purpose because you haven't answered it and you still won't answer it and you never will answer it. So I'll say it again. A two-ton train traveling one mile an hour has exactly the same energy potential as a one-ton train traveling two miles an hour. It's exactly the same amount of energy you can get out of them, no matter how you extract the energy in any kind of reasonable way, except for pushing them through clay, um, they will produce exactly the same amount of work. Okay, that is an absolute fact and you have no evidence to contradict it. So it's just a fact the momentum formula works the kinetic energy formula doesn't. Fact. Uh, let's see. Initial one. So, yeah, so that's where I did the technical point. Um, um, okay, so here, here's a good one, maybe. And there is no evidence supporting your interpretation. So, no evidence supporting his nonsense. So, here's this is an elastic collision like in the case of pool balls, conserves both at the same time. Yeah, well, we know that's, that's the ideal transfer is to have two things of the same mass because then it's really easy because you don't have any problems where if I do the heavier thing, the lighter thing moves away and then the heavier thing continues to move. So that doesn't work entirely, right? And if I do the slighter thing into the heavier thing, the fact is, is the transfer is going to be a problem because the light thing is going to only be able to get it up to a certain velocity before it's going to reflect. It can't get its energy into the heavier thing quickly enough. But it so. But the point is, is if I do do the, the spring compression, if I take the light thing, compress the spring, and then shoot the heavier thing, I can make the momentum more complete in terms of the transfer. So I can mitigate against these little problems. But again, for the sake of a thought experiment, it should be understood that we've already fixed that because we put couplers on the train so when the trains hit they lock or some other thing like that so the energy has to go into the other object alright um, so I say and there's no evidence supporting your interpretation okay let's see what this is wait a minute there's no contradiction so there's a complete contradiction between the energy formula and the momentum formula um, and yes, there isn't any when you do two objects of equal mass and velocity. So yeah, obviously there's not a contradiction then. It has been explained to you by other users over the span of an entire month and you still deny this fact. So again, it has nothing's been explained with anything called reason or logic and not a single shred of experimental evidence. Okay, where does the heat from friction come from? it has to come out of your momentum so you can't conserve your momentum and create heat and friction not possible you can't keep going the same speed if you're losing energy to a surface uh, it can't be momentum because total momentum is conserved as some of the transfers to the other surface so again it's impossible for you to conserve your momentum to keep your momentum and create friction you can't have friction and the same momentum impossible uh, read my post on opposite and equal forces. Why? Why? Because it's silly. Um, there's no equal forces. There's no opposite force. The rocket is only letting a force go. It's There's no opposite force. Uh, why did you skip my post on that? So I didn't skip your post. That was just horseshit. I guess he thinks I'm just going to type this in a millisecond or something. Alright, so anyway, enough of this crap. Just a fucking idiot. Fucking troll. Fucking moron. Fucking human. Just another average dumb human. Another example of the average dumb, arrogant, ignorant human. People suck at everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Till the next time and such.